Hi everybody, welcome back to CSC 231. Today we are going to talk about something called arrays, and in order to talk about this I have brought out a document camera so that I can explain some of the sort of ideas behind arrays and some of the mathematics that we'll be using arrays to talk about. So an array, really all an array is, is just a method of storing data next to other data. And what I mean by that is, say, when we're declaring variables in MATLAB, when we do something like x equals zero, hopefully with the semicolon so we're not generating too much unnecessary output, what MATLAB kind of does is it assigns, we can think of it as assigning a little box somewhere in the computer's memory that has zero in it, and it's calling that box x. Like so. However, when we have an array, we can actually store many things together in a few different boxes under the same name. So for example, we can have our array R, let's call it. I have a few boxes, let's say. Maybe one contains one, two, three, and four, like so. So all of these boxes are given the name R, so you can think of this as an entire pile of boxes kind of standing on top of each other who are all named R. Now arrays are super useful because they're going to allow us to represent some really useful mathematical concepts here. So we'll put this aside for now and start focusing on a little example. So what I've done here is I have drawn a Cartesian plane and we have the point 0.52 represented up here with an arrow drawn to it from the origin to this line. Now, you may remember from classes such as Calculus 3 or Linear Analysis, if you've taken classes like that, that we can represent this as a vector with a horizontal ma magnitude of 5 and a vertical magnitude of 2. Now, there's a couple ways of uh, describing this vector. So the one way we can describe this vector is we can put it in terms of i and j where i and j are unit vectors. So i would be the unit vector in the x direction that has a magnitude, a horizontal magnitude of 1 and a vertical magnitude of 0. j, and I'll, put the, I'll label this with an i there, j is going to be the vector with a vertical magnitude of 1 and a horizontal magnitude so of 0. So if we want to represent this vector here with a horizontal magnitude of 5 and a vertical magnitude of 2, we would say that this vector is equal to 5 times i plus 2 times j, like so. Another way we can represent this, another way we can represent this vector is going to call back more towards the linear algebra way where we can use a column matrix like so. Use 5 and 2 like this. And this is a column vector, so this represents horizontal magnitude, this is going to represent vertical magnitude. So if we want to represent a vector using MATLAB, what we can do is use our idea of arrays and holding data simultaneously. So what we can do is we can say that our vector here, this uh, V is going to be assigned to this stack of boxes here, where we'll shove the horizontal magnitude in one of those boxes and the vertical magnitude in the other box. So using arrays for this purpose is actually going to really help us out when we start talking about vectors slash column arrays like this. So the first part of this video, we will focus on something that we call one dimensional arrays. And all of the examples I've given so far have been one dimensional arrays. For example, if we take a look at this example here, for R, we can say that this is a one-dimensional array because we have a stack, our little stack of boxes here, and this is only going up in one direction. We can also have a one-directional, we can also have a one-dimensional stack of arrays that goes sideways. So if you think of having boxes like this. So this R right here, we would say is a vertical array. You could also call it a column matrix or a column vector. This R right here is a horizontal array or a 
row matrix or row vector, however you want to say that. But there is a distinction in MATLAB between vertical and horizontal arrays. So what you can do if you want to make specifically a horizontal array, well, to put it, to make an array in general, you're going to want to separate it out with your square brackets like this. Now on a United States American keyboard, that's going to be right around where your curly braces are as well. It should be somewhere between the enter and the backspace, backspace keys on your keyboard. Now you'll use a square bracket and you'll want to put in the elements that you want inside of, this square, inside of the square bracket. Now for a horizontal array, what you want to do if you want to make the array containing one, two, three, and four is you'll separate those numbers out with a comma. So you have one comma, two comma, three comma, four, and then we can close this off with a square bracket. And if we set R equal to this in MATLAB, what MATLAB is going to say is that, okay, well, R is going to point to our sideways boxes like it did when we drew it out on the previous page. So R will point to this matrix here. Uh, so R will point towards this array here. If we want to do a vertical array, it will be very similar. We'll say R equals, we'll do a square bracket like so, and we'll start putting in our values. So this will be one, but instead of a comma, I'll actually put in a semicolon, two, semicolon, three, semicolon, four, square bracket. Note that there's no semicolon needed here. When we're ending the array, we only use a semicolon to separate values in the array. Same with the commas up here. We don't need a comma after the last element of our array. So when we do something like this, maybe put a semicolon after that to make it so that MATLAB doesn't, you know, bombard us with input, then MATLAB's going to say, okay, well now R is going to point at a stack of boxes containing one, two, three, and four, like so. So that's the difference between setting up a horizontal array and setting up a vertical array. So what we'll do right now is pop off and is pop over into MATLAB. So what I'll do right now is pop over into MATLAB to demonstrate what this will actually look like when you're typing it up. Okay, so I'm here in MATLAB and I want to show really the process of creating arrays. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to start with a horizontal array. So I'll use the same one that I used in lecture just a moment ago. So ARR equals, I'll type in my square bracket like this, one, comma two, comma three, comma four, and I'll do the other square bracket like so. Now notice how when I type that other square bracket, MATLAB is going to highlight the uh, square, the uh, left square bracket that that went with. So I type in my right square bracket, the left one gets highlighted. And the reason why that's gonna be so convenient is if you say, have a whole bunch of nested parentheses and arrays and all that kind of stuff, it helps you keep track of which uh, it helps to keep track of which statement you're trying to close out so you know sort of where you are in your large equation. So if I press enter right here, I'm not going to put a semicolon because I want to actually see the output. So I'll push enter and you'll see right here we have r equals then one, two, three, and four. They are all spaced out away from each other to show us that, okay, well, this is these are actually sort of in their four separate boxes. And you'll notice that these are displayed horizontally. Now if I do, I'm going to call it R1 this time, equals 1 semicolon 2 semicolon 3 semicolon 4 bracket. So this one is going to be a vertical. Now this one is going to be a vertical one-dimensional array. So I'll hit enter like this. And all of a sudden, now these are being displayed vertically to show us that this is a column or a vertical array, whereas this is a row or horizontal array. Now you'll see over here in the workspace, what we have is we actually have these displayed differently. So the value here is one comma two comma three comma four, whereas this is one semicolon two semicolon three semicolon four. 
So you might have noticed this beige thing that popped up that says this is a 1 by 4 double. What this is saying is that this is a array with one row and four columns that is full of doubles or like we discussed number or like we discussed before that it's full of scalars or just numbers whereas this is a 4 by 1 four rows one column uh, array of doubles numbers again and if we type whose right there we see our size one by four or one with size four by one. So this actually tells us right away what size. So this actually tells us what direction these arrays are going, whether they're horizontal or vertical and how many elements are in those arrays. Now I'm going to put in X equals, let's say five, just for comparison right here. And I'll do who's again. So we have our one by four horizontal array. We have our four by one vertical array and we have are one by one scalar. So a thing that MATLAB likes to actually do is it likes to think of its scalars as actually one by one arrays or arrays with only one object in them. And that makes things a lot easier in some cases when it's working with scalars. Sometimes it makes things a little bit harder and we'll get into the fun little consequences of that as we go through this class. But I just wanna put that as a heads up that our numbers here are actually considered to be arrays. So what MATLAB does is that actually gives us some really, some really nice tools if we want to efficiently create specifically horizontal arrays. And we'll get into why, why we want to use these tools and why specifically horizontal arrays when we uh, start talking about more programming language-y tools like loops and stuff like that. But one thing you can do is that if you want a horizontal array where you can specify a first element and a last element and the spacing in between all other all the elements in between, then they give this really nice format that I'll show you off right now. So let's say we want to make an array where the first element is one, the second, uh, the uh, last element is let's say 23, and the spacing is two. So what we would want there is we want the array containing one, three, five, seven, nine, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, all the way till 21. So we can type in one because that's the first element we want. Then we'll type in two because that's the spacing between every consecutive element. And then we'll type in 21 because that's the last element that we want in here. And that's going to give us exactly what we want, an array where every consecutive element is spaced two apart. The first element is one and the last element is 21. Another example is let's say we want every number that's uh, divisible by four starting at four and ending at 64. So one thing we can do is we can type in four because that's the first element that we want. And because we want everything divisible by four between consecutive numbers, we wanna put in another four right here. So that will take us from four to eight to 12 to 16 and so on and so on. We want to end it at 64. And there's our list right there. So lin space or linear space is another function that we can use to construct horizontal arrays, similar to what we did with the uh, whole colon syntax back in back in the previous scene. So lin space is a function. It takes in three arguments: first, last, and n, and it will create an array with the first element being first, the last element being last, and n being the number of elements in there. So as an example, if we want to recreate the array that we did last time that started at four and ended at 64 and increased by four every time. What we can do is we can type in lin space for 64 and then the number of, and then for the number of elements in that array, uh, if my math is correct, four times 16 is 64. So we should put in that we want 16 elements in total. And there you have it. We have the same array. We have our one by 16 array of doubles or array of scalars, if you want to call it that. Lens space and the previous formatting using colons, those are both going to be really helpful ways of creating horizontal arrays quickly. And I highly recommend checking out the sections in the textbook uh, under section 2.1 that discuss these in further detail to look at some of the other things you can do with it. All right, so one-dimensional arrays are good and all, but sometimes they just don't convey enough information. 
So sometimes what we want to do instead is work on two-dimensional arrays, which we also call matrices. And anyone who has taken linear analysis, I'm sure, will be extremely happy to see that matrices are making a return. And of course they are, because MATLAB is actually what's known as a matrix programming language. So matrices are really at the heart of everything we're going to be do doing here, which is exactly why it comes in at chapter two. So matrices are really important mathematical structures. They're used for a lot of functional transformations. Um, something that you all may not be familiar with, but that is something, but that is actually really important for everyday life at this point, is we use matrices to do things like control what images are put up on your screen and actually transform those images around and do all that kind of stuff. So if you ever have enjoyed a 3D game, like, you know, maybe things like Minecraft, Fortnite, whatever, whatever the kids play these days, you certainly are enjoying the fruits of many mathematicians' labors with regards to matrices and the transformation of matrices. So we're going to be fo focusing on this a lot. Now, this right here happens to be a four by four matrix. It has four columns and four rows. And when we try to talk about a specific point on the matrix, we're going to do it in terms of row and then column. So if we want to look at this negative five here, we would say that it's on the second row and the fourth column. So we're always going to do row and then column. And just like how we'll always work row and then column when we're talking about certain matrix cells, we're actually going to define our matrices row and then column. So I'll take you back over to the actual MATLAB program to define this matrix here. So let's talk about how to create two-dimensional matrices in MATLAB. And we'll, I'll show an example by doing the four before matrix that I showed on the piece of paper with the docm uh, just a moment ago. So the way you want to create arrays in MATLAB is you actually want to define them one line at a time. And what I mean by that is you will start out your bracket like so, and then you will create the first row as if it was a horizontal array. So we'll do seven comma eight comma one comma negative two. But instead of putting a right bracket, we're going to actually do a semicolon. To, to tell MATLAB, hey, we have reached the end of this row, let's start with the next one. Then we'll do negative 4, negative 26, comma, 0, comma, negative 5, semicolon, because we're done with row 2, 0, 19, 0, 8, semicolon, 8, 3, 7.3, 2. And, we pre and when we press enter right here, we get our two-dimensional matrix, and you can see that ants right here is a four by four double, which is exactly what we want. It's a four row, four column matrix. So there are some really helpful functions in order to very quickly create special types of matrices. So the first one is zeros, which takes in two parameters, n and m, both of them are scalars, and it outputs a matrix with n rows and m columns where every entry is zero. So just to show that off, Typing in zeros like this with, uh, let's say, two rows, three columns will give us a two row by three column matrix of everything zero. Another function we have is ones, which does pretty much the same thing as zeros. It accepts the same type of input, uh, gives out the same type of output, except for the fact that it can that it gives out a n by m matrix where every entry is one, just like so. Here's the last matrix producing function that we have right now. It's called i, it takes in one scalar n, and it creates a matrix with n rows and n columns where every entry on the main diagonal is one and all other entries are zero. So basically, for those of you who have taken linear analysis, this is creating an identity matrix. Not sure why they used i as in the eyeball rather than i as in the letter, but you know, sometimes computer scientists be like that when they create programs. So if we type in i, Five, we're going to make a five by five matrix right here. As you can see, what I mean by the main diagonal is that there's a one in row one, column one, and row two, column two, row three, column three, row four, column four, and in row five, column five. So this is considered the main diagonal of the matrix. Everything else is a zero. So we'll be using I a lot as we start working with identity matrices. So let's say I want to make a column matrix. So let's say A equals 25, 16, 9, 
four, one, something like that. And oh, OK, so what I've done is I've made a row matrix. I've, I've made a something that's horizontal when I've really wanted it to be vertical. Well, that's pretty easy. What MATLAB actually gives us is what's called the transpose operator. So basically what it's going to do is it's actually going to flip all of the rows and columns in the matrix. So let's say if we say B equals A, and I'll, I'm going to use a single quote here, or we could consider it A prime. I'll press enter. Now all of a sudden B is the vertical matrix that we wanted originally. And this works for uh, and this works for two dimensional arrays as well. So if we now say C equals, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, that's our C right here. If we say D equals C transpose, like so, all of a sudden, now this row here goes vertical. This row here goes vertical as well. All the columns are now horizontal. So the transform, so this operator is a really, is a really quick way of transposing your matrices like so. Now we have all of these arrays right here, but what good is an array if we can't actually get the values of the array back out? So let's say I want to take a look at what the second value of the array A is. So right up here we can see so right up here we can say that A is the array containing 25, 16, 9, 4, and 1. So if I want to get the second value out of A, I would be expecting a 16. So the way we would do that in MATLAB is I would say, okay, let me get me the value from A that is at the second position. So I type down the name of the array and then in parentheses, I put down the position that I want to get the value from, and it will give me the value in the second position of A. And it'll work the exact same way for a vertical array as well. If I want to get, let's say, the fourth element of B right here, so this should be a four, then I'll ask it for the uh, value in B at the fourth position. And that'll give me a back four, which is exactly what I want. So that's perfect. So let's say I want to get the second, third, and fourth elements out of A. What I can do is I can actually say, hey, give me those elements in A from the second position to the fourth position. So I'm going to use the colon to say everything from the second to the fourth position. And just like that, it will give me 16, 9, and 4, which is exactly what we want there. And now let's say I want to get the first, third, and fifth elements out of there. We'll do the sort of a similar thing to what we did before, where we're going to use this colon syntax. So it will be the first element. And then we're going to say how far apart we want the places where the data is kept in to be. So in this case, we want to do 1, 3, and 5. So that will be 2. We want a separation of 2 in the sort of in what we call the indices of the array, or the positions where the data is at. And then we want to end it at 5. And just like that, that gives us the first, the third, and the fifth element of our array. Now, the last thing we can do is I can type in just a colon into the argument field, and that just gives every, every single element in the array right here. Now, the interesting thing is that it actually converts the array, if it's horizontal, into a vertical array, but it leaves a vertical array as a vertical array. So keep that in mind when, you're, when you might be working with this uh, notation right here. Next, what I want to talk about is how to get the values out of a two-dimensional array. So let's say I want to get the value in the second row and the third column, so the six right here. So what we would type in is I would give the name of the array just like before, and that'll give the row number two in this case, and then the column number, which is three. So the element at the second row, third column of C is six. You can do something similar for D of let's say two and three again, and we get an error. Now let's take a look at what this error means. This is going to say index in position two exceeds array bounds, must not exceed two. So let's take a look at what this array looks like. Well, so let's take a look at this indexing argument. So we have position one, position two right here. Position one is going to refer to the row number. Position two is going to refer to the column number. So something is wrong with our column number right here. And if we take a look at D, what we have is that we actually only have two columns here, but we asked for the value in the third column. So MATLAB's going to have a problem with that. We can't ask for the third a value in the third column from a matrix that only has two columns. So just keep in mind that you might see errors like this. This just means that you've gone sort of out of bounds of the array, and you need to change 
the value of, that you're indexing into. So now if we try to index into say three, two, we should still expect a six and we still get a six. So that's perfect. So what we can actually do is just like in a one dimensional array, we can take advantage of a colon in order to get multiple values out of an array at once. So let's say I want, I don't know, this square of values from C. So I want everything in the first two rows that are also in the first two columns. So what I can do is I will say C, one to two, one to two. So what this is saying here is that I am asking for everything in the row, for everything in each row from spot one to spot two in each of those rows. And I want you to do that for columns for column one and column two. And that's our answer right there. Now let's say I want to do this for all of the rows, but I only want the first two columns, which happens to look the same because we have a two by three array. So let's do something a little bit more interesting. Let's say that I want to look at the first row, but all of the columns in there. So this is going to say, give me row number one and every single column right here. Just like that, we have the entirety of the first row as one column. So we can still use this colon syntax to give us multiple values out of our arrays. So that'll do it for this video. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to modify existing arrays.